this video, we uh, will look at section 2.3, and I put an A here because um, we're just going to cover a little bit concerning this, and then we'll cover the rest in the following videos. Um, chapter 2.3 is to do with vector addition of forces. Let me just bring the textbook. So, vector addition of forces. So, please take note of the word vector and the word addition and the word forces. So if you looked at my previous video, I discussed how forces are actually vectors. So when we deal with forces, we need to deal with them as vectors. And in this specific section, we will deal with the vector addition of forces. Okay, so guys, one of the main things that, that we are learning in the next few chapters is that, well, basically, what are we trying to do? In, in the real world, we have a bunch of forces that act on a body, right? So, for example, here is an example. Here is a body, this hook, okay? And we have some forces acting on the body. Can you see that? We have force one and we have force two. But oftentimes it is required that we get the resultant of that force system. So we've got two forces there, and it's often required that we find the resultant force acting on that body, right? Because remember, these forces are acting in their respective directions, but they have an effect. They, they have a resultant, they have a net effect, a, a net force, a resultant force acting on this body. And, it's, and it is very helpful that we learn how to determine what is a resultant force acting on a body due to a number of forces, okay? So that's the first thing that we want to, we want to uh, determine. Guys, please uh, get this right. Um, perfect this, really understand this because this is gonna be used for the, for the next number of chapters and years in your studies. We need to find out how do we determine a resultant force from a number of forces, okay? For example, here's an F1 and F2. How do we determine that resultant force? Okay, so this is the first thing that we need to understand. The second is kind of, I guess, um, really the opposite, is what happens, here, here is a, a picture, it's a bit blurry, I don't know if it'll focus. What happens if we have a single resultant force and we want to find components of that force along two arbitrary directions, two arbitrary axes. Whereas in this case, we had two forces and we wanted to find a resultant force. In this case, we have a resultant force and we want to find the components of that force. Okay, so really the opposite. Okay, so the first thing we must learn is how to find a resultant force from a number of forces and the second thing we need to learn is to find the components of a of a force a single force along two arbitrary axes okay so does that make sense so here's another picture if we have a single force being applied it's an applied force a single force we want to know what is happening along two arbitrary axes okay so please please just get this as a as a bird's eye view of the whole course that these are two things which we must master and really the the essence behind these two things are the parallelogram rule or the triangle rule okay so we will discuss that in the following video so do you get that guys the one is to find a resultant force and the other is to find the components of a force